Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rock the Cash Bar, episode number 34. Diane, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I have a, a really strong Manhattan, so I'm always Perfect. okay this time of night. It doesn't matter what happened during the day. Once I get here, we're good. I curled my hair. Do you like it? I, I do like it. A Manhattan, you're so sophisticated. Cosmopolitan, erudite, the very urban Diane Gallagher. Uh -huh. Urban? I meant to say urbane. Urbane? That's, yes. I, I, that's slightly, I, I, I don't know. I don't I'm not, have to look that one up. I'm not smart enough to know the difference. <laughs> I don't think I do either. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought of urbane as, as meaning like, uh, like, like city-wise, like, like okay. well-read. Okay. metropolitan you that's can me. find your way around town oh that's me yeah of course that's you you know every alleyway in this city uh-huh uh-huh prowling alley cat you i really do i have lived all over the city i've lived everywhere except pasadena um like as a child we moved all around houston like i have lived like if i can throw like darts at every part of houston and if you just drop me in any because houston's a big fucking city for people who don't know who aren't from here um, and I can find my way home. <laughs> I can, I can. We're going to try that. I'm going to abduct you. I'm going to blindfold you. I'm going to drive you into some weird part of town to see if you oh, can find your way back. That's fun. I'm not going to tell Corbin that I'm doing it until it's already been done. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news, buddy. Your wife's in a weird part of town. Good luck. Good luck. I'm giggling. All right. Well, I'm getting nervous about the time. So let's tell the listeners what we're doing today. I mean, it's not like they haven't clicked on the link and they know what song <laughs> that we're doing. <laughs> it's always, always act like it's this huge surprise. And they're like, we know we clicked on the words. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a fun one, one that I'm, I'm nervous about today. So we've got two guests on today. Do you want to, do you want to introduce our first and primary guest? Well, so we set this up to be a Jenny Johnson week and about like 30 minutes ago, she texts me and they are having blackouts in LA and she's really nervous about um, if she's going to be able to get online with her internet and she might have, she's going to try and if she can't get in, she's going to call in, but it's good that we have a, we have an, oh, and Jenny Johnson, she is a Texas native. Um, she was a news producer here in Houston who became um, a Twitter famous comedian who now lives in LA and is doing real stand-up on real stages and um she's very very funny and mm. you think thank goodness we have a backup in case she can't get through because you tell them about your guest <laughs> we're one of my this is this is one of my favorite people in the world is my friend matulu kafele matulu and i were bartenders together we met about seven years ago uh he's a really really funny guy uh but we're doing jodeci today and if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I only just learned how to pronounce Jodeci <laughs> this weekend. Yay. So like we're literally, like we're talking about a, a kind of music that I know absolutely nothing about, <laughs> like even less than usual. Like I know, I know nothing about this stuff. Nice. And I didn't want to be like, like, I didn't want to fake it. I didn't want to do the research and, and pretend that I knew these names or that I knew uh, you know, some of the, some of the language, some of the lingo, like, I, I just felt like such a fish out of water that yeah. I called my friend Tulu to say, can you please help me? I don't oh. want to be the dumb guy. Who Tulu's no here. Tulu's, Tulu's here. here. We're going to let him in. Let's bring Mr. Whiteside in here. <laughs> Tulu Whiteside. Uh, Tulu, how are you? And he's sideways. <laughs> See if he can Tulu's always us. a little sideways. <laughs> can you hear us? Am I sideways? Wow. Yeah, you, there are. you are. There we can hear you though, and see you. <laughs> <laughs> that, are you? Are you on? A, are you on a phone or a laptop? What's I'm, on, I'm on my phone. Can you turn it? Does that work? <laughs> no, I have a I have a little thing thing. I I have a hold on. Hold on. Uh 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 uh. That's good. I'm just gonna sing. Oh wait, that's working. Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, we gotta. <laughs> oh, God. There he is. Perfect. This is edgy camera work. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that, that's my fan. I just bought that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he disappeared. Hold on. He's coming. Hold on. I have faith that he's going to come back. Yo, this uh, video was stopped. Your video stopped. 
Yeah, the audio's still going. Can I get you back? Ask to start video. I'm asking him to start video. Post asked you to start your video. Okay. There he is. I, I can't see y'all though. Can you see me? Yes. I can see you, yep. Yeah. That's all that matters, really. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Try swiping over a page on try swiping over a page on Zoom. Like like swipe a page to the left or the right and see if you see yes. if pop up. There you go. But now we can't see him. But now I can't see you. Or hear him. Hold on. I'm gonna ask Zoom him. meeting difficulties. I know. Uh, Zoom. Has this been a Saturday Night Live sketch yet? It should be. I know. Probably. I'm I never watched it anymore. Okay. I see I you. Can you see us? Um, yeah, I, I see Ben, but, uh, he's, he has really long red hair. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he a lot prettier than he usually is. He looks is. way better than I remember. He goes over, <laughs> he goes overboard on the makeup when we do these things. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks fine. How's everyone? I want to get all dull. I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you very much for coming in and doing this with us. Yeah, it's funny. I never thought anyone would ever be like, hey, Tulu. Tell me about Jodeci. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all those angsty moments of my adolescence are finally paying off. You know? Well, we were talking before we brought you on, like, so my background in music, I mean, obviously my, me and Ben both like have a great love for 80s new wave music, but I was not born on the plains in Canada like Ben. I grew up in very <laughs> urban schools. And so I also know my R&B and my Jodeci, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ben is shaking in his boots over here because he is, he knows nothing. <laughs> I need I need the deep background. Like I was literally this is so embarrassing, but I was like I'm a 40 year old white guy and I was literally I was googling New Jack Swing today because I'd never heard of it before. Like I I didn't understand that term at all. Yeah, and and to to your defense, it's one of those I would call it a a failed music genre yeah. only because it was so they did something that was you know it's like um how can i well i to be obscure to be extra obscure there is a style of rap in chicago that was called rodeo uh -huh. it was only done by one group called crucial conflict and they wrote the west side of Chicago is the 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 bad side. The, the the there's a lot of gun violence in the west side of Chicago. So they made a style called rodeo, and they wrote urban gangster rap western style music. Holy shit! What? Like, the, the, that the should have come out of Houston. <laughs> <laughs> should have, but it was one of those styles where it was like the style was based on the style called rodeo, but and it had this p particular cadence, right? Um, yeah, but then Bone Thugs and Harmony kind of had the same cadence, oh, but love, they didn't have that. a name for it. You know, they didn't have a name for it. So it was just what they did. So it was like, so, so New Jack Swing is kind of one of those things where they named something that was kind of, it got bigger than the name, but, but like for culturalists and people who are really into music and, and R&B, we do understand New Jack Swing, but everything pretty much became what New Jack Swing was. Right. So who are the big names in, in New Jack Swing? Like, so if I say New Jack Swing, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Uh, Guy, uh -huh. a group, group called Guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like um, Loosely Heavy D, pretty much anyone from um, Uptown Records or MC mm -hmm. Records. So it's, I mean, Bell Bib DeVoe, um who else new edition almost like but new edition was uh -huh. kind of older because they were still kind of like late 80s too but yeah, going into the 90s was new edition doing the amount of sampling that other new jack swing groups were doing everyone at that point sampled but new edition was kind of on their way out because they, yeah. they were they were a boy band right and so they were a lot of the bands in New Jack Swing became, they were adults when they became a band, but New Edition, like they grew up together. And right. like, so by the time that came along, I feel like they already kind of had built up those long 
like five member angst issues that most bands weren't dealing with at the time since they were newly formed. Well, I'll, I'll read you this, which I found online and I didn't know this and I would have, wouldn't have thought of it this way, but I'll just read this. It said, former members of Minneapolis sound funk group, The Time, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis produced Janet Jackson's digital R&B album, uh, Control in 1986. Okay. And it was considered one of the first successful records to influence the, influence the rise of New Jack Swing by creating a fusion of R&B, rap, funk, disco, and synthesized percussion. Um, they said that it was particularly evident on the second single, Nasty, which we all know. Um, and they said the Nasty. success, the, su the, the success of Control bridged the gap between R&B and rap music. Um, I wouldn't have thought of Janet Jackson's Control in this. So that was interesting for me to see. Yeah, I mean, and when you, when you bring in Janet Jackson's Control, then we have to start talking about Paula Abdul. Yeah. And, and that, and that framework that people just eventually started using. So yeah, it was, man, you know, it's funny. I didn't, cause they say 1986 for new Jack swing. I was only four. And so like, so maybe, maybe, well, I mean, I guess you can attribute it to it. Like now looking back, you can attribute new Jack swing to earlier, but to me, it, it really just really, it started with like, you know, like the boys, the men, Joe to see, right. and, um, and like, and the heavy, heavy D was kind of new Jack swing, but boys to men actually had their own version where they called it a, uh, it was new Jack swing, but they tried to call it Motown Philly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that was it, that I whole song that they did was trying to usher in that genre. And it was, but the, the difference between Casey, the Joe to see is, uh, can we curse on this show? Sure. Absolutely. Them motherfuckers didn't dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, them motherfuckers started off very, very gospel, and then they did a big switcheroo later on, too. Does that have anything to do with it? Well, I don't know. Well, I, I think it's more of... It, it's more of if you can sing and you're young and you're Black, there are, you are going to start in gospel. Especially if you're yeah. if you're a man, um, you're going to be singing in the in the in the choir in the church. Yeah, and that they is, said all four of these were raised in extremely Pentecostal families, which I didn't even know. Black people were in the Pentecostal <laughs> religion. We're we're in everything. Um, <laughs> we're, we're in everything. Um, but yeah, so I think well, they're they're from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So 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 like you have like Baptists and Southern Baptists, but. Um, but so, if I remember correctly, there's two sets of brothers, mm -hmm. Casey, Jojo, Dalvin, and Devante. Yeah, last name That's is right. Yes, Dalvin and Devante. And they were in two separate groups right. in the same area. Mm -hmm. So, but Casey and Jojo's group, they, they were more of, uh, it was them two and some, fem and, and some ladies, women. Yeah and women um and uh so they were more like a quartet they sang like classic style uh stuff and jojo i mean Devonte and uh dalvin were the more contemporary so that's that so they met just because they were like the best in the area and that's how they got together right uh but i don't think they got along when they first met because uh casey was very casey's always been a was it Babe, which one's the skinny one in Jodeci? <laughs> she, she, she's in the 20s. She don't know. Uh, <laughs> the skinny one in Jodeci, I want to I say Casey. I want to say Casey. He was, he was protective of the women. Okay. So there's a story, there's a story that uh, he pulled out a gun on Dalvin the first time they met. Oh, shit. Uh, hey. Yeah. Christian gospel. <laughs> so, still the South. And still the South. People like guns. <laughs> <laughs> People like guns. Yeah. People like guns. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to take over the conversation. Like, what else, what else you guys got? Well, yeah, I mean, we can get into the history. I mean, there's not that much more history to cover. I mean, they kind of, you know, they go to New York and um, they play, I think they, get um 
they had like so many songs to like show in their demo. And mm-hmm. I think yeah. they, they did like, it's, um, was it come and talk to me or something? And they made them do it again. Cause it on the demo, it sounded too well done, like maybe overproduced. And they're like, no, you sing it in person. And they did. And they signed them because they're like, Oh yeah. Shit, it's, it's a, it's a crazy like, like music industry story where, uh, one of the members of, of, of Jodeci, I'm, I'm trying to look at uh, Devante, apparently drives to Minneapolis when he's like 16 years old or something like that. And he's, he goes to Paisley Park Studios, to Prince's Studios, because he wants to audition for Prince. Yeah. And he does the thing where he, where he goes and begs the receptionist, like, you've got to have Prince listen to this tape. The receptionist, very well trained, obviously, no, no, we don't want to hear anything. But he goes back every day for a week until finally he goes home, you know, dejected. And that's, that's when he learns to write and produce. But... I read that story and thought that I think record studio receptionist would be the perfect job for me or really anybody. <laughs> anybody who just wants to shatter dreams and break You're a no man. Yeah. yeah. Well, just so, make money being an asshole. No, fuck off. To, so I can to, just to, see Ben filing his nails like, mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you, you produced this yourself, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, to actually Prince to expound, told me to tell you to get lost. <laughs> to expound upon that story, um, when they they got a deal their first time, the first day in New York, they got a deal, but they showed up to the studio late as it was closing, and they had to and they had to pretty much finesse their way in, and the only person who would talk to them, I, I, they I think he said like he kept falling asleep <laughs> just listening to the album. <laughs> And so he was like, all right, well, let's, that's, this is where. Oh, he froze. Yeah. It'll catch up. It'll catch up. Okay. And he was like, hey, you guys, Heavy D, you got you to hear this. And so they signed um, a provisional contract that same day just to make sure that, um, that was, up, I think that was Uptown. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was Uptown. So they signed a provisional contract just to make sure the people who were over, like, uh, New Edition, BBD, uh, and, and wouldn't sign them. Okay. So, And yeah. a little competitive and a little, uh, like, let us have this guy. I saw that they were assigned to Uptown intern Sean Combs, who took the task of developing the act, so... Uptown intern Sean Combs. That's, like, how yeah. much, like... like there's got to be people who are still like trading on the stories of when they worked at Uptown Records and Sean Combs was the intern there. Like, go get me some coffee. Up, <laughs> and think about that. Think about the first person who was a dickhead to Sean's like, oh, Sean's here wearing his, <laughs> wearing his stupid puffy shirts. Hey, Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Puffy, go get me a shirt. Go get me a, some coffee. Right. Um, Those interesting people have tidbit. all disappeared now. So you bring up Sean Combs, and this is another world. And this is this is just how, this is just how, how um, I would say rip, ripple effect that hip hop is. So Sean Combs being wanting to make a name for himself, and and actually this is how Jodeci became more popular in that era because they weren't the soft R and B group. And if you look at the other groups, like you know, like uh, Guy maybe groups before them they wore suits and they dressed up and they sang they sang to women right. so but Jodeci made songs that the most the average bastard would sing they pretty much just begged on a microphone you know <laughs> so they were they were popular in R&B because they transcended that original demograph a lot of that had to do with their look that was that was given to them by uh by Puffy Sean Combs he uh, this guy named Dapper Dan, he has a, um, he has a, a Netflix special where he pretty much was a designer and he would, he would buy uh, Gucci and Louis and Louis Vuitton and he would reconstruct it into these like full jackets and full outfits, stuff that they weren't doing. Right. And so that style was given to Jodeci. And that actually became how most R&B groups started dressing. They started wearing jerseys and baggy pants and, and Timberlands. And if you look at the, uh, the group H-Town, knocking the boots, mm-hmm. they're, they're not even wearing clothes. They're just holding it with their shoulders. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, 
but they didn't and that's where like i like i said they didn't dance either because these type of this type of clothing you know the you just gyrated and while you sang so right. so puffy he changed he he was a very uh instrumental in jodeci changing the game because it, it was kind of like he had the perfect product to give this new look to and then it just became a template for everything I wonder if he really believed in this idea or if he was like, let's throw this shit against the wall with this no name band and see if this works. And then holy shit, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? Because when you when you look at it, I mean, I don't think they're attractive. I mean, <laughs> you know, but but I, I, I see why women do, you know, but it was the last er it was it was kind of the ending error of where like you really, really had to be, you didn't have to you didn't have to be beautiful to sing anymore. Yeah. You know? So they, 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 I mean, reverse. You reverse. had to start being you beautiful. You had to, to start. Sing. I knew yes. where you're going because I, yes. I have this conversation a lot. Like it was somewhere in the 90s, it shifted. I think it was kind of the, the end of grunge where we're like, we're not letting ugly people be famous anymore. <laughs> like from here on out, it's beautiful. Doesn't matter if you don't really have talent, we'll add it and post. But yeah. we gotta, you got to dance and you got to be good looking. Yeah, the and so, but Jodeci was kind of spot on with 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 the with the product. You know, they they looked like the product. But if you go like a couple years back and you have Luther Vandross, like he always looked like someone's fat uncle. Yeah. You had Teddy Pendergrass, he looks like someone's fat nephew. You yeah. Know? It's just yeah. I hate when people cut out at an important part. Oh no. <laughs> so, so kind of ushered in. You had to, you had to be able to sing not not two women, but ne necessarily, but you had to be able to sing for men. You know what I mean? Mm. Like men, men had to be able to use your songs rather yeah. than like women just being your audience. Like dudes would roll around playing the. Jo I had the Jodeci tape. No, no women around me. Yeah, <laughs> I had the Jodeci tape as a as a young man. So let me interject and tell you my biggest Jodeci like story or memory at from being a teenager and it was uh, my friends were driving to Galveston for spring break. Everybody in Houston was driving to Galveston for spring break. And it's a bunch of teenagers and it's a bunch of teenage boys in one car and teenage girls in another car. And these guys kept pulling up next to our friend's car and they were flirting all the way down 45 South. And then at one point, um, the guy in the back seat was fully out of the car like all the way to his waist with his arms you can't see it because anyway arms completely out blaring come and talk to me my <laughs> baby really I really um, <laughs> exactly so, yeah jodeci was like the fortune cookie for men you know <laughs> you just crack it open like oh there's a line you know Forever, my lady. Yeah, I mean, women would just swoon at those lyrics. Those are the lyrics that women, especially, I say women, teenage girls want boys to say to them. <laughs> they cracked that code. Yeah. And <sighs> He'll catch up. He'll catch up. He'll catch up. There you are. Sorry, you, uh, you froze. There you go. You're yeah. back. I'm back. Hi, how's how are you doing? How's how <laughs> everybody been? Good, good. So Diane, usually are you, on, are you outside? Is no, she outside no, on the patio? Oh, no, it's just it's in a dark room, and I have some Christmas lights on the wall behind me. I'm just setting oh. some some Jodeci mood lighting. Is what's happening here? Is well, I asked him if I had to have a shirt on. <laughs> no, <laughs> not want to wear a shirt. Are you? Do you have something you want to show off there, Tulu? No, I'm just. Just for the sake of Jodeci, I was just like, I didn't know if I needed to wear a shirt. Because, I mean, <laughs> they, they had Put shirts. The, the leather jacket and the big open chest. Yeah, you should have done <laughs> yeah. that. That would have been good. I, I don't know what I was thinking of. I should have told you. <laughs> oh, there's a, we an need action, seductive to Tulu. <laughs> there's an Action Bronson song with uh, Riff Raff. I don't know if you know. You, y'all know who Action Bronson and Riff Raff is? I, know I do Riff not. Raff. Riff Raff's a skinny white rapper from, from Houston, whereas Action Bronson is a fat white rapper from <laughs> Staten Island. Okay. <laughs> and and I, I, I listened to him. He, he sounds a lot like Ghostface Killer. Um, so people were kind of really like hating on him, but he has this one line 
where he says, he's like, bitch, make me a tailor made a tailor made leather Jodeci suit. And ever <laughs> since I heard him say that, I was I, I was listening to Action Bronson. I was like, what does he know about a big ass leather Jodeci suit? <laughs> But that one line won me as a fan. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's let's get into it. We usually do this at the top of the episode. So what we do is we go through the lyrics line by line and talk about it. And this one is going to make Ben all kinds of uncomfortable. We wish we had, because he said you're a poet. We wish we had had them printed out and had you read them like you were at a poetry slam, which would be really funny because we're doing Thenan. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, are so you ready? We put it out are to you? our Patreon to vote, and we gave them uh, lately, uh, Fenan, and come and talk to me. No, and forever, my lady, and they chose Fenan, and I was like, really? You didn't want to choose lately? <laughs> but that's what we're going with. Fenan. Okay. <laughs> so Tulu, I'm gonna I'm gonna come on to you specifically. I'm zeroing in on your Zoom frame. Are you ready? Hang on. Let me get. Uh oh. Oh my God, it's about to get bright. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. There we go. I'm not doing that, but you guys go ahead. <laughs> Hit me. All the chronic in the world couldn't even mess with you. You know what I'm saying, baby? Now check this out. Take my money, my house and my cars. Now that really made me jealous because like, <laughs> I rent, I don't have a house, and I've only <laughs> ever had one car. Like, I can't, that's just not a line. I, I can't offer that to anybody. Like, take my house and my cars. It's forever out of my league. It's not gonna happen for one hit of you. You could have it all, baby. Because making love every time we do, girl, it's worse than drugs. Because I'm an addict over you. And you know that I. I can't leave you alone. Mm -hmm. You got me feeling. Oh, yeah. Leave it open, Ben. Leave it open. Yeah, we're closing it up. <laughs> <laughs> you got me feeling. So is, is feeling, and, and again, Tulu, uh, five years ago, had to explain to me what on fleek meant. So mm -hmm. I don't really mind asking him. Feening is it is like fiending, I take it? Yeah, like a drug fiend. It, not, not like it, it is. Yeah. It is. Right. It's just it straight is. up, I'm fiending. Okay, so this yeah. is... This man is uh, is after this woman the same way he would be after a drug. He's addicted he, to her. He's going through withdrawals, sir. Mm -hmm. Yay. He needs a hit real bad. Mm -hmm. So is he, Jones is, he like, is he singing this to her over the phone or is it into the answering machine message? Or like, like where is like in the real world, where is this getting delivered? It doesn't fit like on a pager. <laughs> this is the night. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I th I think you might be on it with the uh, with the answering machine. Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. that's uh that's that seems like the move. Like that's that's pretty much the John Cusack of of R and B. Yeah. <laughs> the the say anything machine. with the, yeah, the big stereo over the head. I mean, because if if he was if he was feeing for her so much and she was actually there, I don't think the song would ever be sang or written. Yeah. You know. Unless no. she's just like, no, no, I need you to beg. And he's like, like in person. But mm -hmm. um, begging yeah. is what they do best. Yeah. Ain't too proud to beg. Uh, yeah. So let's keep going, Ben. I want to hear you. <laughs> I want to hear you read this some more because this is fun. I can't leave you alone. You got me feening. Feening, you got me feening. Got me going crazy. I can't leave you alone. You got me fiending. Girl, I'm fiending <laughs> for you. This is, uh, I saw this Elvis documentary when I was a kid, like probably 10 or 11 years old. And it was all about like the evils of rock and roll. And it's like a, a pretty famous like black and white clip of, of I, I forget who it was, but it's just some, you know, white guy my age now going, let me read you some of these lyrics. Bebop a loopa, I love her so. Bebop a loopa, she's my girl. Be Bapalupa, I don't mean maybe. That, that's what I feel like doing this. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, like... you, you sound like Stephen Hawking's reading erotica. <laughs> <laughs> I penetrate you with a back or forth motion. You 
You starting to moisten more than previously before. I won't give up until you're satisfied. <laughs> I said I'm feeding for you. I don't have a mind. It's all blown on you, baby. See, girl, obviously very young when they wrote these things because, and I, I hate to admit it, but I like I I don't think that I'm ever gonna feel like this again. Like I remember yeah. feeling like this when I was 17 or 18, but yeah. now that I'm 40, like I, you just don't have that kind of like all-consuming. Only you will do. Yeah. Well, you got you have shit to do. Yeah. I mean, number one, <laughs> it's like yeah, like I really. I'm getting to that age where it's like, am I gonna try to have sex with my fiance <laughs> or am I gonna brush my teeth and go to bed early? Yeah, we're all there. Our libidos are much lower now. We don't have those raging hormones. And we also don't put each other on these ridiculous pedestals anymore. We've got 20 years of like hard relationship knowledge to know that her shit does stink. <laughs> she ain't mm. perfect, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. She's a human now. <laughs> you hear that, baby? Yo, shit stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Roses really, really smell like boo-boo. <laughs> Now, the, the, that pe is... the pedestal can feel like a prison in, in, a, in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Like, I put you up so high on this mantle, you're like, I can't. Yeah. What you're, am you're, I doing up here? You're more likely to get your heart broken if you put someone on a pedestal. But my, my problem is, when the fuck have I ever been on a pedestal? I don't feel like <laughs> I've, ever, I've ever gotten that chance, you know? <laughs> ever. Well, girls like, no one do... Ever do that. I'm sorry if you've never been putting up there. You may not have known that you were on there. You didn't read a girl's diary that was into you because we are psychos. But in person, we act like, no, you're going to chase me. Like, and then you don't. And we're like, what the fuck? And, you know, like I'm talking about a teenage girl. We do worship these dudes. But then in person, we're like, no, you're supposed to do it for me. You're supposed to worship me as teenagers. Hmm. That's why we're fucking crazy at that age. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a female Jodeci? If we mm. had to, if like if you had to think of any, even, not even from that era or even now, like what? Like what TLC, song? maybe TLC. I think about like uh, not being too proud to beg, and uh, creep. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think so. See, but t singing not being too proud to beg is the most prideful way to beg because you're. <laughs> You're not begging. You're just saying, you're just you're just telling me I ain't too proud to beg. Right. Yet, True. Yet I've I've I'm well, I'm waiting for you to beg. I'm waiting for the begging to start during that song. <laughs> Is that a what, what you mixing that with there? Well, it, there was a Manhattan in here, but I drank it all, so now we're just throwing some bourbon, straight bourbon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. To quote hey, the hey, immortal hey. words of Atmosphere, I'm gonna hobble down the street until I reach Knob Creek. No. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to hobble <laughs> right on over to the other side of my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't leave you alone. You got me fiending. Girl, you got everything that I need. Got everything that I need. I can't leave you alone. You got me fiending. Girl, I'm fiending for you. I can't. There's something about it that just, just makes you want to get, like, like angry. Like, like, <laughs> are, are you... Are you reading lyrics now or just, like... Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you. if I'm... I can't tell if I'm reading lyrics or if this is like a law and order courtroom scene where I'm, I'm making like the, <laughs> I was fiending for her. <laughs> Lady, Lady, I'm hooked I'm on you. you. Go ahead. Oh, oh, am I going to read it now? Yes, your yep. turn. La Hold on, let me see if I can get, I don't know, I don't know how to croon or Lady, I'm hooked on you. I, I want to read it the way you would read it. Um, if you just saw it written as poetry in a book. Lady, I'm hooked on you. There's nothing else I'd rather do. Spend my last dime for a drop of your time. Surely, girl, without a doubt, you know you got me strung out. <laughs> it's bad poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I love that they're sticking to the drug reference. They have, they have a theme of this song. They're going to stick to the parallels of what it's like to be a junkie. And then, like, <laughs> strung out. And you know what? I've been here. I've been here. I've been obsessed with... You've been strung out before? I've been both. Uh, I've been 
I've had that feeling of like wanting to be some with someone and then not being with them and then feeling like I am going through like serious physical pain. And if I could just make out with them again, um, it would feel like taking a hit. Like I would feel relief. I would feel relief again if I could just be with them. And I feel like I'll that. You felt that. Say that again. You broke up. Say that again. I said, how, how old were you the last time you felt that? Early 20s. I'm 43 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that mean that love dies, like the older we get? Like it, when it, it doesn't have that dynamic feeling, that absolute need anymore. Like it becomes more, like of all the things that, that love is, like it's, it's the feeling, it's the, it's the passion, everything like this that. Song like this song isn't love. This song isn't love. This is lust. Lust is For different. Sure. Uh, it's mm -hmm. immaturity and lust, and it's raging hormones. So many things change when you get older. You understand what love really is and different ways to love somebody. The hormones have settled the fuck down. Thank God. Can you imagine what this world would be like if we had those level of hormones until we died? Like, what would this world <laughs> look like? <laughs> There'd be 60 billion of us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no one would be faithful. I mean, no. dudes want to hump everything. Girls would be insane. We would be insane. We would be intolerable. The, the, the whole we, world would, we, would smell like semen. It would just smell like <laughs> semen. But yeah. on the bright side, we'd probably, they'd, there'd probably be, be no pixels in Japanese porn. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which is the number one thing we should be getting rid of. I, I don't know why we're focused on anything else. That's the, yeah, that's like the gun problem. control. Let's talk about. <laughs> let me I see. Think if, let me see those Asian genitalia right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we still had like the hormones of teenagers, we'd be like well on our way to a feminist utopia by now because all or most of the men would be in prison. Like I think mm. without a doubt. Like there's no way that we'd be like you'd be guilty of one thing or another by the time you're 40 for sure. <laughs> or we all get cancer from having to process those hormones all the time. So at that at that chance no one would have genitalia cuz it'd be rotted away. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, the STDs would be out of control. But maybe we'd finally find the superpower STD. Not like, like, oh, not, does, not only does my dick burn, but my eyes shoot fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mutated STD. Humans are really good at evolving and mutating. We would find a way to get us out of this hell. Because <laughs> it would be hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Our genitalia would become like the dart frogs. They'd be poisonous to the touch if you. <laughs> <laughs> Girls would really have to just grow teeth down there eventually. Be like, we have to <laughs> stop. We have to stop. <laughs> just to stop the raping. <laughs> oh, she got her first vaginal teeth. <laughs> so oh, it's so cute. <laughs> the, she's the, grumpy because she's teething <laughs> uh, don't the, forget the, to floss your pussy the the cooch tooth fairy <laughs> oh my god who's who's really just your uncle <laughs> oh my god oh oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I'm going to take a pause to just say Jenny is texting me. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it here anymore. So our friend Jenny was supposed to be on this podcast and she's in LA and they're having rolling blackouts and so she couldn't get in. But um, we'll just tell everybody in here and, and ask her about her toothy things. vagina. <laughs> um, it's something that you do when it gets like too hot and the uh, companies have to like shut shit down. I actually am talking way out of my uh, knowledge realm, but I know that it's something that has to do has to do with energy saving. I think. Oh, okay. I I knew that, but rolling blackouts. I was like, how much does she drink? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know her what? Own personal like, rolling oh, blackout. Maybe I misunderstood her text. <laughs> um, hey, Tula, I mean, if we have more Jodeci to talk, we can. But before we move on, uh, did Ben ask you to come with the Guilty Pleasure song? I did not. 
Okay. So think about that in the back of your head as we keep talking. Uh, at the end of the podcast, we like to talk about guilty pleasure songs. If you don't have one, no pressure. But uh, but what would you what would you define as a guilty pleasure song? Like a song that just go ahead, a song ben. that you really like. Just a song that you really like that you'd be embarrassed if uh, if Alex Gregg was to know you liked it. One well, one way we say is like if you're in your car and you turn it up at the same time you roll your window up because you don't want other people to hear you jamming it. <laughs> uh, well, me being the free person I am, I don't have one, but I would say a song that people be be surprised that yeah, I hold that on to it. To. Okay, yeah, hold on not to now? it now. No, okay. not yet. No, we'll, not yet. We'll do it at the end. Okay. Is, huh. is Jenny coming in? No, I don't think so. Hold on. Let me see the text that she said. My power is completely out. I just had to walk outside to get a signal to text you. I don't like it here anymore. Hold on. Were you able to call any of those numbers? This is really good podcasting, by the way. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if she could just pop in for a second, but I don't think, um, I don't think it's working out. Um, Tula, do you have, what's your favorite Jodeci song? I mean, we covered Fiennan, but what's your favorite Jodeci song? Um, I like Come and Talk to Me. Yeah. I mean, that's it, like, I feel like it's their biggest hit, right? It's, it's their biggest hit, but I think it's like the least aggressive of the songs. You know, it's like, hey, I, come and talk to me. I really want to know you. I mean, he doesn't say please, mm -hmm. uh, but, but it, it's still like, hey, let's have a conversation. You know, it, it's, it's like the, it's the first slide in the DM <laughs> ever. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, like I put it, I put up three songs for them to vote on because I like three different parts of Jodeci. I put in Lately because Lately is a song and it, it Lately is really good because they do that good MTV Unplugged version of it. Uh, and it's it's very heartfelt and it's somewhat it's him being afraid that their relationship's over. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a true love song. Yeah, it's a true love song. Yes. And then uh, Come and Talk to Me is just that, yeah, it's that sliding into your DMs. Um, but and one that I didn't put up for vote was Forever My Lady, which is, you know, she's having my baby. And it's oh, forever. <laughs> it's not, actually, no, no, it's Forever My Lady. It's, it is, it's Forever My Lady. That's your favorite? Uh, yeah, because <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's about, no, I'm, how could I, yes. Forever my lady should have my baby. Uh, now my baby is born healthy and strong. Healthy and strong. It's more like, healthy, yeah, healthy yeah. and strong. <laughs> no, forever my lady. I would, yeah. So uh, I was, oh, I was reading when I was doing the research for this that, uh, that Kanye announced Kim's pregnancy in concert by singing uh, Forever My Lady, like, like, like in front of like, you know, big stadium sized audience or something like that. Kim's there and he just turned to her and just said, you know, you're having my baby and then Aww. covered oh, Joe's oh, eyes. Cause she didn't know until he sung the song. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know it yet. She's you're like, about to get I'm pregnant. aware. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the world didn't know it yet. <laughs> he, really he peed for her, like they were pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you are now pregnant with my child <laughs> oh well that's really sweet to introduce to the world because they have to do everything public <laughs> yeah you uh, have to at that point i don't know like this is a really it's kind of a weird song for me to listen to because like like watching mm -hmm. an, or listening to another dude's seduction techniques is kind of creepy for me Mm. Because like like this song makes me think of like crushed velvet and bearskin rugs and furry <laughs> chests and like like all that kind of like hey girl thing that wiry guys like me are just not cut out to do. It's like it's not, it's never been part of my game. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's strange to think of. Like Tulu, have you ever have you ever tried it that way with like the I don't like this the cigar and brandy like come into my parlor. Well. Like, have you ever invited a woman into a room that, that had like dim lighting and, and red sheet covers and all that kind of stuff? Have you ever Rose been to Marfrellas? All over the bed. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> does, does, does Marfrellas count? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, uh, I've done stuff like that. Um, I had a, um, the young lady I was with when I lived in my, oh, you guys, okay, hello? Yeah, we still see you. You're back. Okay. You're back. The young lady I was with when I lived in um, Miami, I had no money. 
I only had enough money to um, to buy one rose. So what I did, I bought one rose and I took some printer paper and took a red marker, pretty much covered one whole sheet with a red marker and then typed the word rose petal, had it printed on the sheet and then cut out rose petal all oh, and then I and so I laid rose petals from the door to the bed oh. just just with that one rose. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? So, oh yeah, it worked. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean like I'm not saying like you know we did it we went after it but I mean she was <laughs> she she understood the gesture and from one artist to another you know it was it was like it's like I can't get you rose petals but I got you rose petals you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> but I mean as far as being like overindulgent and sweet and you know um I mean there's be bubble baths with the candle setting um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, something PG. It was a, a girlfriend's birthday in high school and, you know, we, we weren't drinking. So I got some of that sparkling grape juice. <laughs> we don't we... have to take our clothes <laughs> off. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> and so we had a little picnic in the park and I got those little stupid plastic champagne glasses. And I made sandwiches and we drank sparkling grape juice like it was uh, like it was champagne. Oh my God, you're like little church virgins. That's so cute. <laughs> church virgins. <laughs> like, as opposed to like whorehouse virgins. <laughs> I think they exist. Um, Diane, have you ever been lured into a dark room or out onto the Sultan's yacht? I'm trying to think of like, have I ever been like, romanced like that because i've only had three long relationships and the first one was started in high school and you know no we made out at a party uh second one no we met up at riches and then started dating <laughs> that night <laughs> um but corbin the guy that i'm married to actually did a very surprising thoughtful thing and i forgot about it till you mentioned bubble bath but yeah he um like our first year together on Valentine's Day, he cleaned the whole house, which is not like him, um, and then had a bubble bath made for me with candles and all this. I'm like, he really was like trying his best. And I was like, look at this motherfucker. Like it was <laughs> Yeah, he does a good job. He can be very surprisingly romantic. But it's then not, not, it's not but easy. Then not, <laughs> I was gonna ask you, like you say this stuff kind of makes you uncomfortable, but are you uncomfortable in the same way with like Marvin Gaye or like the, you know, the, it's not, con I don't know if it's considered R&B, but like, you know, the older versions, what, what I consider like older versions of R&B, sexual healing and stuff. No, but I, I think that's a little different because it comes from, from further back in time. So it, it, it comes across as a little sweeter to me. Like, mm -hmm. like even, I mean, obviously, you know, Jodeci is is thirty or is it forty years old now? Like also, it's, it's one yeah. guy and he was older. This is four young guys coming at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Marvin Gaye <laughs> was never young. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> he never seemed to be. None of the singers back then seemed to be right. <laughs> no, which is which is different because when you look at having number one chart topping songs of a person that age. Now that that doesn't happen. Like Marvin Gaye was old when when those songs came out, and those songs he made new music as an old person. Older artists don't make new music; they tour off their old music. You know. So, Hold on, say that again. Older artists, what you broke? Uh, that older artists usually don't make new music. They just tour off their old music. Right. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. if, if Jodeci was to make an album now, it, it, it'd be all right. Fans, some fans would buy it or purchase it or stream it or whatever they do now. But someone's also going to be like, man, they're old shit though. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. way back in the day, I feel like older artists released new music. Yeah, it was common. Now it's it's really weird. Like even Blondie didn't get started till she was in her thirties. That's unheard of now. You start when you're sixteen. Yeah. 
But it's also weird because like, like you say, like if you start when you're 16, then the only emotions that sort of make it into the mainstream are teenage emotions. Like you're never going to see somebody who's 35 or 45 or, you know, unless it's in country music, you're never going to see somebody like breaking through with a, with a song that speaks poignantly to people our age. It's all just straight up that teenage. I was thinking about this in my car, how we talked about the moment when I was young and I went from new kids on the block to the cure, like real fast, a real hard shift. And Mm -hmm. I realized that was odd for me as like 12 or 13 year old listening to very juvenile love song lyrics and then i heard the cure for the first time and i was like no i want to hear this grown man's poetry <laughs> this is where i'm <laughs> i'm going now <laughs> and i think We're, some girls couldn't follow me down that track they didn't get it they didn't like it they wanted to hear more more new kids on the block and i was i don't know if i was more mature or ready for it but i was like no 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 i'm going this way <laughs> i want to hear what this guy has to say yeah i had that with uh well, I would say you know, Erica Badu came out when I was in middle school and she was, you, you didn't know she had a body, you know, she wore like gowns and yeah. 10 feet of fabric in her hair. But to me, like the stuff that she was saying, like resonated with me. Um, like I picked my friends, like I picked my fruit or, you know, catch a four leaf clover. You can catch like the stuff like that. And it was like, you know what? I didn't have to have a vehicle or sell drugs, wear a certain type of clothing, or play ball, or do any of this shit to be the type of man that she would go for. Right. So it was, it was all things I wasn't interested in anyway, you know, like coming up poor, like, I'm glad I, I, I learned about Goodwill and Salvation Army and, and vintage shopping, because by the time vintage became like a trend, I had a closet full of that shit, yeah. you know, and mm. I didn't, like I didn't have to, I didn't have to throw away a whole bunch of polos and oh the over <laughs> the oversized polo shirt error. Oh my oh, god! Oh man! Oh man! Uh, oh, Houston's the Houston was 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 guilty as as shit as as, as anybody <laughs> in the in the oversized polo era of, of fashion. I but, graduated high school in 1996. You look at my yearbook and it's all there. <laughs> That's all it is. I mean, the, the collars of the shirts are all, they're all right here. Like they're, they're, they're all like on the shoulder. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, yeah, the seam that's supposed to be here is here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so Sister Sister is on, uh, is on Netflix now. And uh, Mark, Marcus, Marcus Houston, who's an immature, who just married a, uh, how old is that woman he married? <laughs> 19. He's like 40 something. He married a 19 year old. Um, but if you look at how like they dressed young black men in those, in those uh, shows, like even, uh, even Moesha, the young, even young black kids, the shirts are what adults would wear. Yeah. So they pretty much took adult shirts and if into adult shorts with kid shoes and adult belts and that <laughs> and that was that was fashion for a long oh, long yeah. time the 90s were so weird jinkos i mean we just wanted to be baggy 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 which i'm going to say at 43 inability to lose weight as fast i'm all right with it coming back <laughs> let's bring baggy back the thing that i remember the most about 90s fashion is like the is the is the the top collar button being done all the way up and no tie. Mm. Like the untucked shirt with that, that sort of like that Steve Sanders from 90210 sort of thing. Like I remember yeah. that was the, that was the look that I was going for when I was 11. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. When I was Tucking 11 and looking to crush some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we do. Crush so pussy. <laughs> Get on it, girl. I got basketball crack practice at 445. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sorry. That's I'm sorry. Awesome. I'm sorry, everyone. Well, I'm going to say one last fun fact before we close out Jodeci is that the video for Fenan was filmed in a mental asylum, like a mental institution or an asylum. Yeah, and I watched it today and that was like, that was not at all. Was that what was like, I, I was expecting Why? candles and bubble baths. Yeah. And, and the whole thing is he's being violently thrown into a, into a padded cell. Yeah. That's wearing okay. a straight jacket he's fighting against it the whole way through it was crazy have either one of you had 
pussy or dick so good that you were that you that you admitted yourself into a an inpatient facility. I'm gonna say no, dog. <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> that's, that's, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely. Neither have I. But yeah, so I wanted to say that when you were talking about how that song made you uncomfortable because you never felt that way. But I was going to ask you if you've seen the video because the video, I mean, but granted, they didn't do him singing next to like a spoon or a needle right. or like, so, I mean, like the only way you could have gone is go crazy. Okay. But I think Casey and Jojo have a song called crazy when they broke up. They they have a song called Crazy. I wonder if the video came out before or after Requiem. I can never say that word. Requiem for a Dream. What the Fiend video? Yeah. Oh, definitely oh, before. Yeah, it way was before. before. That was, okay. I can't yeah. remember when that movie came out because I was like, I wonder if they were just trying to show like the idea of going crazy from drug withdrawal. You know, <laughs> like they show Un unpopular that. unpopular opinion. Requiem for a Dream is a shit movie. <laughs> and every person I saw, like, oh, it's the greatest movie in your life, especially me being a theater kid and like all the angsty, all the angsty women in, the t in my life who, who didn't want to, didn't want to be finger banged, but listened to Modest Mouse and or Dashboard <laughs> Confessionals. And they were just <laughs> all about the lyrics of the song. You gotta listen to the lyrics of the song. Uh, Oh, Requiem for a Dream is the best movie ever made. And I saw that movie and I'm like, this is shit. It's stressful yeah. as fuck. It's it's dark and bleak for dark and bleak's sake. Like there's there's yeah. nothing else to it other than like like Theron Aronofsky who wrote and directed it. Like he was he was just sitting there going, How do I plunge these characters into the most misery possible? It yeah. doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. It's just it's the yeah, feel no, good. It's, it's the feel good movie of whatever year it was. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> it it didn't win any Teen Choice Awards. I'll tell you that. It did not. <laughs> but I was surprised to hear that to know that Marlon Wayans was in it, and I mm -hmm. I felt that that's something people should have said. Like this is a great movie. Marlon Wayans is in it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to find out for myself. I, I don't know. I could I liked watching I liked torturing myself with movies like that when I was young. Right now I'd be like, I don't want to watch this. This is stressful. It's like watching kids. Yeah. Watching kids as an adult, you really actually start to see the the juxtaposition and the brilliance of the movie. Because when you watch it as a kid, you're like, man, I want to hang out with these kids. I want a summer like that. Uh, to to a certain extent. But then when you watch it as an adult, you're like what the fuck are these kids doing? Yeah, it terrified me even as a kid because like, I, I'm not from a place like that. Like, I, I'm not from New York City. I saw it when I was like 16 or 17. All I knew were the plains of Canada and the suburbs of Texas. The idea of growing up in the city looked terrifying. I was really glad that I didn't have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, being that unsupervised with that many places to go outside, like, I was living in Colleen, Texas, and like if you, you go to the pool, like the pool's in the middle of a huge ass field. You can't sneak into that motherfucker because <laughs> everyone driving by is gonna be like, oh, there's a pool open. Like you can't sneak into that shit. So like and there's <laughs> there's nowhere to skateboard. Nowhere. Cause like all of our it's such a small city, there were no handicap ramps built into the sidewalks. You you had to skate get off your skateboard, <laughs> get on it, skate, get off your skateboard. <laughs> like you, you, you couldn't skate around the block or, or, or through different blocks. You, you couldn't do that. Interesting. <laughs> Those buildings are not up to code. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Is that Jodeci? I think that's Jodeci. I think that's Jodeci. We've done Jodeci. Uh, bravo, you got through it, Ben. No reason to be nervous. <laughs> Tulu, I thank you very much. I, I carried Tulu, Ben like, on my like, back. <laughs> you really did. I called Tulu like three hours before we started recording this. I was like, I really need your help, man. I, I really appreciate you coming to help us out. No it's problem. Really, really I, uh, nice of you. No, you asked me uh, a couple a couple weeks ago to try out the podcast, but you know, I was going through my uh, my my stress. I was like, I, I don't have time for anybody else. In my life. <laughs> I feel you. And, and look who and look and look where I am. <laughs> <laughs> 
pick a well, group, pick a song. You want to come back and like like do an, an episode that we that we can prepare for and get ready for anytime you want. You're open in, open invitation. Yeah. Okay, for sure. Ooh, well, we're we're gonna go over rodeo rodeo style songs by Crucial Conflict. Okay. <laughs> okay. Deal. Deal. Genres. Well, stay with us. Hold on. So we have a couple segments and then we'll let you go. First is our Dressed Up Like a Douche segment. It's where we read a listener's uh, misheard song lyric. And this one comes from our friend Slade Ham. Uh, every, uh, Paul, he just wrote, Paul Young, every time you go away, you take a piece of meat with you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just funny. You know like a, Every time you go away. away. <laughs> you take a piece Good of piece of meat, meat with, with you. you. <laughs> Supposed to be me, um, which is just funny. I just imagine someone who like just has like low blood sugar or like you know, or they're doing um, keto and they're like, I just I have to have a Slim Jim with me at all times. Yes, yeah. I would play it in my barbecue restaurant all day long, just on repeat. <laughs> just hang, <laughs> hanging out at the charcuterie just all day. <laughs> All right, time for guilty pleasure songs. Ben, do you have a guilty pleasure song this week? I do. I hadn't thought of this song. I kind of, I, I sort of halfway came across it as I was as I was researching this song over the. Uh, have either of you ever heard of Morris Minor and the Majors? Yes. They were this. Yeah, they were like this novelty British rap group in in the late eighties, and oh, they had a couple of hits if you could call oh, it that but no, they were no i haven't <laughs> <laughs> not what i was thinking <laughs> redacted they did, a, they did a song called stutter rap that was basically a takeoff like almost like a uh, almost like a like a uh, weird al yankovic parody of uh the beastie boys no sleep till brooklyn but it was called no sleep till bedtime <laughs> and they're just these like three english guys uh, who are like like in their English accents are like aping American rap and, and hip hop with these lyrics about like like it's no sleep till Brooklyn but it's just basically they're mad at their mom because mom's making them go to bed <laughs> and when I was a kid like nine or ten years old I absolutely loved it I had it memorized I listened to it again today and it holds up oh shit it speaks the truth to what it's like to be ten years old and be told <laughs> to go to bed and the pain and heartbreak that goes along with it is fully expressed. It's like uh, Fresh Prince, like parents just don't understand. That's your version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that, but so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you'll have to text me the full name of that group so I can add it to the show notes, because I have never heard this before. I'll send it to you. All right, Tulu, do you have a guilty pleasure song? Yes. <laughs> um, it's from one of the best unplugged albums ever. Okay. It's actually track number seven, Alanis Morissette, mm -hmm. I Was Hoping. Oh, I don't know this. I don't either. It was, You're it's, it's, uh, it's a song about, I mean, it's about a lot of different things, but it's, uh, it's her hoping she could go through certain things with a guy. Like one of the lyrics is, we were talking outside and, the first first verse is like how she she slept with a friend who is involved with someone else and and she was like and she's like I'm I'm I think it's like I was hoping you you weren't going to be all fucked up about this and then and it's 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 a weird song but it's like it starts off as real haunting and then like an orchestra comes in and like it has this really kind of down tempo kind of lo-fi trip hop beat to it and I was dating a Wiccan at the time. Oh, wow. And she took my Erica Badu album, and we actually traded Erica Badu Baduism for her Alanis Morissette Unplugged album. I'm going to have to go uh. listen to this now. It's called I Was Hoping. It might be track four, now that I'm thinking about it, but I was hoping. Alanis Morissette Unplugged. All right. I will I check was, it out. I was hoping. I was hoping. I'm Diane. Okay. What are you feeling guilty about this week? What have you done? I went real fucking stupid with mine. <laughs> and I forgot all about it until I heard it the other day. Or I maybe, maybe I, just, I sing it to my kid all the time. But mine is, um, it's a very important song from a man <laughs> named Samwell that goes, 
I said, what, what in the butt? I said, what, what in the butt? <laughs> and I don't know if I like his version better or Butters from South Park when he's. <laughs> That song was so popular on YouTube. It went everywhere in what, like 2007 or something. And I mm -hmm. couldn't get enough of it. It fucking made me laugh so hard. <laughs> I said, what, what in the butt? You want to put it in my butt? Okay. Well, oh my God. So, it's so, funny. so you, you sing that to your child. Um, I try not to, but my son really <laughs> thinks, my son is in first grade. And in first grade, butts are funny. Butts are the funniest but, thing in the world. Butts, butts are hilarious. And he has his funny. famous butt dance that he does um, that makes me laugh. He turns his back to you and he goes, he'll first, he, he has a specific head movement thing that he's looking away from me where he's like, butt, 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 butt. And then he does this dramatic back arch and turn and he'll face you with his butt facing you. And then he's like, butt, 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 butt. And you have to see him do it the funniest fucking thing. So then I sing, <laughs> butt, I say, butt, butt, butt. I say, what, what in your butt? It's a, butt humor is very popular in our house right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found out that what what chicken butt is still the one of the hot things on the streets for adolescents. Every single time he says, "Guess what?" we say chicken butt. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually think that's like some. I believe we're living in a simulation, and I actually <laughs> believe that's one of the little tidbits that they use to make sure, like, oh yeah. It's like a systems check. Everything's still good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I am a thousand percent with you. <laughs> that's, that's ensuring there are no glitches in the matrix right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Tulu, thank you for coming in. Like, especially since Jenny had rolling blackout drunk problems. And <laughs> I'm glad you could fill in. Because otherwise it would just me talking to Ben about like, what it was like listening to Joe to see. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah, well, appreciate it. Thank you very much. One of these episodes, we need to get into what weird angsty music he listened to when he was trying to put moves on the women. Okay. Um, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's all like Neil Simon or some shit like that. <laughs> 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 but no, thank you, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you thank so you much. Too. We'll see you. Right. We'll see you again. How do I turn this thing on? Leave. Uh, okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Bye, Tulu. Good fellow, that Tulu. Thank you, Tulu. Oh, what? Thank God that you reached out to him. Um, hopefully, we'll have Jenny on for another future episode when she's not. <laughs> I, I just like the idea that now she's just blackout drunk. <laughs> I'm going to go with that <laughs> narrative. <laughs> we can get her on next week or sometime soon. Uh, well, next week, um, do I have this written in my notes? Yes, yes, I do. Hold on. Before I get into my business, did you go pee? Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, next week we are going uh, to OzFest. Are you guys ready for OzFest? Are you ready? I'm just talking to a chair now. I'm ready for OzFest. We will be covering Supernaut by Black Sabbath with our pal and comedian, Mike McRae, which I am super excited about. Most people the know great Mike. Mike McRae. It's Most always a pleasure talking to him and the, and the 17 people who live in his head. He's a great <laughs> impressionist. Great impressionist. I wonder if he does a really good Aussie impression. I can't imagine that he doesn't. <laughs> so I'm really, really, really excited for this one. Um, all right, special thank you to Chuck Savage and Eddie Hawkins for our amazing intro music and to Sarah Wessling for the guilty pleasure vocals. If you would like to become a Patreon member for $5 a month, go to patreon.com slash rock the cash bar. With that $5, you'll get early access to all episodes so you don't have to wait till Thursday and also some cool swag and the chance to vote on every other song that we do. This week was a Patreon vote week. Uh, check out our Spotify playlist with all the songs we cover, including the uh, guilty pleasure songs. And that's it. Uh, if you want to check out our podcast, our, our website, it's uh, rockthecashbarpodcast.com. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will see you next Thursday with Mike McRae and some Ozzy Black Sabbath. Thank you for rocking the cash bar with us. Bogue. Bogue.